You can do that with little salts and different things and let it set for a while, let it soak. Or you can get a pinch, you can be on it, or you can do it both together. You know, the Bible says, Romans chapter 3, that our hearts are hard. Our hearts are resisting. We know what water repellency is. We are God repellent people. We have a tendency to repel things spiritually, to send them off and away, to stiff arm them in football. We want nothing to do with, we have no experience of success with these matters. And our state is hopeless and desperate. Jesus is telling Nicodemus, Nicodemus, forget the universalist thoughts that you have that everybody's going to make it. Something else needs to happen. And from Pastor's experience and his view, what this means is that the softening up of very resistant, hard hearts. Our sin has cooked our hearts and our souls so that they are so horribly God resistant that only a merciful God, having full, wonderful, free mercy towards us in His love, working to change us. Beats our heart, softens it up like big bombs, clustered, fall, and break up the ground so your troops can go through. Nothing can happen from our part at all until God effects this, this step of our hearts, the second birth part. <coughs> How about your case? Where do you stand? Has something spiritual happened in you and been done by God? Foundation. 
creation, there is earth, there is soil. It is not this physical earth. The world here is people. That's you and me. God has so loved the world that he did. He wanted to do something about it. Because those he loved were hopeless and it was helpless. And so verse 16 says, he gave outstanding gift. He gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him, it says, should not perish, but have everlasting life. We're Baptists, many of us in this room. One of the things we believe in is secure assurance of God's charge regarding our salvation. Here it's doubled, isn't it? Shall not perish. Then it says, says positively, shall have everlasting life. That's something we can have assurance of, isn't it? Look at verse 17. God sent his son, did not send him to, <clears throat> to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Saved. And we'll conclude with 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This verse tells us that it's not a case of our taking advantage of something that will better us and improve our present okay relationship with God. No, this verse says our relationship with God right now is outrageous. It is hopeless. It is worthless. It must be the second birth. So here's the reassurance of really this message this morning. God still loves the world. This morning you have life, breath, and consciousness, my friend. Consider, has God been working at your heart? Finally, after perhaps even years of knowing the truth and the, the facts, the four ways, the four spiritual laws, you know some tracts almost by heart. You know this verse by heart. But you never truly experience the second birth. My advice to you is to seek it with all of your heart. Don't remain as you are because you are already condemned. I was condemned. I was without strength. And God changed me and softened my heart and gave me belief. Now let me say that in preparation for this week, actually for 10 days or so, I've been reading in Operation World, this great book on missions, uh, about the country of Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a country of approaching 200 million people, a huge nation. Very, very much a country of Islam. 89% of Bangladesh is Islam. 9% is Hindu. Now, 0.66% of Bangladesh is Christian. In Bangladesh, they have the Brahmaputra and they have the Ganges River that come and come close together and they have unbelievable floods in Bangladesh. They have cyclones and hurricanes in Bangladesh. You watch the news, you listen, and right up there next to Indonesia, right up next to Indonesia, uh, Lydia, is how desperately dangerous it is, I think, to live in Bangladesh. They need Jesus. They are lost without Jesus. Some Buddhists in, and some Hindus in Bangladesh are actually coming to the Lord. Their lives are even an extra terrible misery because they're so, those two religions are so oppressed by Islam there in Bangladesh. And some of them are being driven frantic and some of them reach the truth of Jesus and become Christians. Did you know that over half the people in Bangladesh live on less than a dollar a day? Less, how do they do it? They spend almost every bit of that on food always, just to live. And where they live, what is their shelter, what is the condition of their living? We send them the gospel, and this is one of those countries when, when well under four, uh, well under 50% of the country cannot read. 
We've had missions groups there for decades and decades. When I was a teenager, I studied for a missions contest in my church in the country of East Pakistan, which is today's Bangladesh. And I think people needing the Lord. People needing the Lord. And there are other countries comparable. There are billions. This week, according to the United Nations, finally what we were expecting does happen. This week, world population, the first reach, 7 billion people. 7 billion people. And I would venture to say, we can safely say that close to 6 billion of those, no matter what they call themselves, let's just round it off, I would say there are 6 billion people that need to hear the message of this sermon today. What is the message? God still loves. The gospel and the hope is still available. The times are not finally fully at the end. As long as we have life and breath and this truth reaches us, perhaps it will communicate. We've all been born technically. Yes, we're the sons and daughters of God from one perspective. But we're not saved until we've been born again. And it's not hopeless. Seek his salvation. His promise never to leave unlocked that door you might be knocking on. But listen, the initiative has always truly been his. The power is his. Question Are we seeking him? We have a desire for him. Pray for that desire. Because you're already condemned, the Bible says. But thank God there is hope through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, God still loves the world. Do you know He loves you still? He does. God still loves the world. Our Father, I thank you for your blessing in the preaching of this message this morning. I guess it may be so very like those of this annually bent to God, but we need a reminder. We need a reassurance of your love and its continuation. It's Satisfaction is good, but it's only for others and not in our day. But it is still, you have not washed your hands of us. But oh, our sin, oh God, our sin and eternity is ahead, ahead and soon. Help us to seek this second birth, this work of your spirit. May our lives begin to show belief as we trust you. As we're born again by your blood, oh God, ours were saved. And become part of the family of God. May our lives give evidence of truly new life in Christ. Please, O oh God. Our Father, we pray that you'll do the work again that none of us can do for each other. The work that must be done only by you. We give you thanks that you still love us. And the world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.